Welcome Bitcoin friends, it's Bitcoin Mamo. Today we're going to look at the Bitcoin charts. We're going to be looking at the cycles of Bitcoin. We'll be comparing all three of these cycles here and we'll be using Fib extensions to look at bull market peaks and bear market lows. And we'll also pose the question, did the stock market crash in our current cycle affect our possible targets compared to previous cycles? So if that sounds interesting, stay tuned and let's get into the charts. We're going to be using the Brave New Coin chart when looking at this analysis. This comes under the BLX ticker and it has the most amount of price history for Bitcoin going back to July of 2010. And I do just have the bull market peaks marked off. Of course, this is our peak at the moment. We don't know for sure if this is the peak or not. But we can see this peak here was in November 2013, the next peak in December 2017, and this possible peak in November 2021. We do see they are pretty much four years apart here, and this peak here was back in June of 2011. So first we're going to use some Fib extensions and look at these bull market peaks in each cycle. We do have this set on the log scale, and just starting from this first bull market peak here, we drag the Fib extension down to the bear market low of the cycle and we get these extension levels. Now this Fib extension is on the logarithmic settings. So if you do open the settings here, we are ticking this box, Fib levels based on log scale. And we see with this first cycle here, we did peak out at the 2.272 Fib level. We did have this mid cycle consolidation between the 1.618 level and the 1.272 level. We've just zoomed in to make that a bit clearer and going to our next cycle, taking it from the bull market peak to the bear market low. We see a similar thing. We did peak out pretty much at the 2.414 level, so at a similar Fib extension to the previous cycle. So this cycle did look different without that mid cycle consolidation. And finally, we look at our current cycle. And what we see, that peak at around 69,000 was pretty much in line with that 1.618 level. And we have been consolidating here between the 1.618 Fib and the 1.272 Fib. Quite similar to what we did here in 2013 between the 1.618 Fib and the 1.272 Fib. And a while back we were looking at these Fib extensions. And as we did have this run up back up to the 1.618 Fib level, I was expecting us to do a similar thing as in 2013, where we did break that level and finish off the bull run, coming to that 2.272 level. However, we got another 50% throwback here. And we did come back to that 1.272 level. So that initial target I was looking for around the 2.272 level was at around 210,000. The 2.414 level was at 280,000. We did have this throwback, and I believe this was the chance for Bitcoin to have that blow off top. But we did have that throwback. And for me personally, I think this cycle has gone too long now for us to reach that new bull market peak at these higher levels. We do see the last three peaks are pretty much exactly four years apart all towards the end of the year in 2013, 17 and 21. So we could say we are having extended cycles. That is one of the theories, but that is still open for discussion and people have their different opinions. Obviously this cycle was different. We did experience that stock market crash and perhaps this crash affected the bull run in a way that we didn't reach these higher targets. If we are able to get back above the 1.618 level, which is at around 60,000, then perhaps we are doing extended cycles and we could possibly look for these higher targets. For me personally, I do think this was the top, but I have talked about that in other videos, what would change my mind to thinking we're still in a bull market. Just to put those three cycles side by side now, this is that first cycle, second cycle, and our current cycle but we can see it does look similar to this first cycle here with the exception of the stock market crash and the fact that we have come down to the 1.272 level twice here after reaching the 1.618 level, whereas in the first cycle we just came down once and on the second attempt at the 1.618 we carried on. 
and finished off the bull run. So this was quite a big drop during that stock market crash. And this in itself, this run up here from 3k to 14k and crashing back down to 4k was in itself almost a mini bull run and a bear market. And just measuring those moves, we did actually move up 340% here and came down from that peak in that stock market crash down 71.5%. So quite a big drop here. The only other times we've had drops over 70% like that have been during both of the previous bear markets, which were approximately 85% drops. And personally, I think this affected the bull run and the potential targets that we may have been expecting as we had to almost start again down here at 4K after being up around the 10K level where we can see we launched off that level on the previous occasions looking at the 618 level once we got up to it that was our launch pad for the bull run and also in this cycle once we got to that 618 level that was our launch pad for the bull run and we see here we got to that 618 level and then we had that massive correction, 71%. We had to get back to that 618 level before we carried on the bull run. So our argument could be made that perhaps this bull run will be longer because we did have this price action with the stock market crash. Or perhaps we could say that the bull run target was less because of this stock market crash also. So I wanted to look at the Fib extensions now using this as the peak and this as the low as this was in itself a mini bull run and a bear market. And we see something interesting when we do that, taking it from that peak down to the low. What we see is our current peak at 69K does line up with that 2.272 level like it did in the previous two cycles. So it is quite interesting using that stock market crash as a new bear market low and this as a mini bull run that we do seem to reach that 2.272 FIB target. So I've just got them laid out side by side. This is the first cycle again, the second cycle in the middle and our current cycle and using the new FIB extensions, using that stock market crash as the low. And we do see it hit that 2.272 level pretty much exactly. And we also did come back to the 1.618 FIB level. So just an interesting observation so now I want to use those same FIB extensions when looking at the bear market low after that peak. This is the first cycle on the left, second cycle in the middle and current cycle on the right. It will be the same for all these charts. So we see in the first cycle here, we're using the previous bull market peak to the bear market low. We had that FIB extension. We came to that 2.272 level. And then in the bear market, we can see we came back to the 1.618 FIB level. Looking at the second cycle, again, previous bull market peak to bear market low, we came to the 2.414 FIB. And looking at the bear market low after that, we can see that 1.618 level was close to the low here. This is on a log scale, so there is still quite a bit of price difference here. And when using the FIB extensions with our current cycle from the bull market peak to the bear market low, not using that stock market crash, we do see our peak was actually at the 1.618 level, which is actually the next bear market low levels on the previous two cycles. So now everything's the same here, except with our current cycle, we're using again that stock market crash low and the peak here after the initial run. And again, we came to that 2.272 level. And when we do use the extension like this, we can see that 1.618 level is where we did come back to around that 29 30K area. And this was actually the bear market low on that first cycle, that 1.618 level. Second cycle went a little bit lower. So how can we compare this exact low here with our current cycle to possibly project a bear market low? We can add a relative FIB level, this time the 1.5 level. This isn't actually a FIB number, we're just using it to mark off the bear market low here. Again, all of these are the same, we've just added in the 1.5 level. We're using that stock market crash bear market low still. 
and we can see when we do mark off that 1.5 fib it gives us a bear market low target of 26,000 so quite interesting obviously this second cycle went lower on this bear market low compared to the first cycle here which was more closer to the 1.618 fib level so this is just to compare to that previous cycle perhaps we could go a little bit lower as the trend seems to be going slightly lower but again there are those two different ways of doing it using the actual bull market peak and bear market low extensions or incorporating the stock market crash seeing this as a mini bull bear market and using this peak and this low as the fib extensions which does seem to line up better with the 2.272 target which was around the previous cycles targets and again, that would give us a possible bear market low at 26,000. I'm sure some of you are saying we are in an extended cycle. We do have higher to go. And perhaps we're doing a similar consolidation here to what we did in the 2013 bull run. And obviously, if we do get back above the 1.618 fib here, then that would definitely look more likely. And perhaps we could look at these higher targets. But now we're going to look at a more detailed comparison between this cycle and this cycle and compare the mid-cycle pullbacks here if this is a mid-cycle pullback. So we've laid both of these cycles out together now. Here on the bottom is that 2013 bull run starting from the previous bull market peak here to the bear market low. We've still got the same FIB extensions marked off. So we had that consolidation between the 1.618 and the 1.272 level. And then after that, a mid-cycle consolidation, we carried on the bull run and came to the 2.272 target. On the top here is our current cycle, previous bull market peak at the end of 2017, bear market low. And obviously this first cycle here was a shorter cycle compared to our current cycle. So we need to line them up in a relative way. So we have lined up both of the previous bull market peaks and we've also lined up here the mid-cycle peak from 2013 with this mid-cycle peak. This time we're looking at this peak here which was 65k. This was obviously a higher peak but we will look at both of these and we need these two relative points to line up these charts. So we've lined up the bull market peaks and the mid-cycle peaks here. What we see is a similar consolidation between that 1.618 level and the 1.272 level, like what happened in 2013. But when we do use these points as the reference points, we do see that we should be coming up to this 2.272 level, either this month or in May, possibly June at the latest, if we are to do a similar thing as 2013, when lining these up in this way. So we are going to use some different reference points here just to look at them in a different way. So the same thing now, this is the first cycle down the bottom and our current cycle. This time we've lined up this as the mid-cycle peak at 69k with the mid-cycle peak in 2013. And that gives us a potential bull market peak around that 2.272 level around February of 2023. I think that first chart looks a bit more accurate here. As we can see, the consolidation here doesn't quite line up with the 2013 consolidation. And finally, now we're going to use the halfening date as a reference to line up both of these charts. So again, the first cycle down the bottom using the previous bull market peak and the halfening date here, which was around December 2012 and our current cycle using that previous bull market peak and the halfening date, which was a May 2020. And when we do align them up with those reference points, what's interesting is it does end up lining up with the peak in this first cycle. We saw we peaked here on this green candle and looking at that same point, it gives us the peak in November of 2021. We're at 69K. So this one does also make a lot of sense as all three of these do seem to line up. And I think both did have this consolidation between the 1.618 and the 1.272 level. Bitcoin had the potential to do a blow off top here at the end of 2021, similar to what happened here, but we did get pushed back down. 
and it feels to me that this was the bull market peak and now onto the next chart what i've actually got pulled up here is obviously we have the bitcoin price here with these candles but on the left scale here and this orange line is actually the amount of bitcoin in existence at that point in time we can see we've just hit that 19 million mark of bitcoins in existence so there are 2 million left to be mined but it did seem interesting when you did line up the two the bitcoin price on the right scale and and the Bitcoin supply on the left scale, but it does seem to pretty much get the last few bull market tops here. And it is approximate, obviously didn't get it exactly, but we do see it also lines up with these two tops in our current cycle. And there does seem to be that relationship between the number of coins in existence and the Bitcoin price. And obviously with the halfening every four years, the new supply gets cut in half. So we do end up with this curved line. This is on the log scales, so it does curve it even more. And the price is also on the log scale. But we do see that similar pattern of diminishing gains when looking at the bull market peaks and also diminishing new supply. So I think that's about all. I hope you enjoyed that perspective on the cycles and those FIB extensions. I'll leave it up to you to decide which one seems to be correct. There are many viewpoints. We looked at this one first using all of the previous bull market peaks and the bear market lows. And it showed us doing a similar thing here as the 2013 mid-cycle consolidation between the 1.618 and the 1.272 fibs. So some people would think that we're doing a similar thing. We have the second half of the bull run to go. And if you do fall into that camp, then you also probably fall into the extended length cycle theory, where each cycle is taking a longer amount of time. Or do you think this is a more accurate model using the FIB extensions with that effect from the stock market crash, with it giving us that 2.272 FIB target on all three cycles? And if so, this was the bull market peak at 69k. And we pretty much did a four-year cycle with all three of these peaks being pretty much exactly four years apart. And also the bear market low potential here coming between the 1.5 FIB at 26K and the 1.618 FIB at 30K. So just some different perspectives. And again, different people are going to have different views on how this cycle will continue to play out. And I am ready for both possibilities. I'm half in cash and half in crypto. And I'm happy to change my mind if the conditions are met, mentioned in previous videos, to flip into being more in a bull market. But as things stand at the moment, I see it as being in a bear market until and unless we meet those conditions. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. I'm Bitcoin Mamo. I'll see you next time. Bye.